Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. Our topic tonight is all about developing your personal brand. And it aligns with topics that we've discussed before on this podcast and in our books, Imbar, The Pathway of Transformation, and In Speed of Purpose. If you already have a copy of Imbar, you may want to have it handy to reference during this episode. If you don't have it quite yet, you can find a link to it on our website, gapology.org, or you can always just search for it on amazon.com. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for asking. I'm uh, really fired up today about this topic. Um, you know, we're talking about something that we've we've really discussed in private, the two of us, for a long time. In fact, back to the the days of developing out Imbar, uh, we talked about personal branding, and and we really haven't really. I think broken it down on the podcast. We've got a couple of episodes um, that we talked about that I think kind of connect uh, back in April of last year, 2023. There were a couple of episodes I think were loosely tied to this. But, um, you know, I'm excited to go through personal branding and hear your advice on how do we create this? How do we build a personal brand that we can be proud of, number one? but also that will impact our overall effectiveness at work. So um, I'll turn it to you, Mark. So, you know, what are some of the things that you'd like to share here? Well, I I spent a couple of decades um, working with leaders on their personal brand. Mm -hmm. And it, it became pretty incredible. We wrote the book Imbar uh, in part based on that. Um, but, um, we, we really haven't come back and talked and given, given each of you as leaders, the knowledge we have around personal branding, it, it's one of the most powerful things we've ever seen. It's included in MBAR, but it is somewhat different as well. Uh, would that be safe to say, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's connected. Certainly. Uh, when we talk about MBAR, it's really an acronym. So identity. How you see yourself drives your mindset, how you think and feel, which drives your behaviors, the things that you do, which drives the actions of those around you, which ultimately delivers your results. So it's an acronym for those things. And, and I think your brand is, is connected there um, to your identity specifically. And on pages 116 to 123, we really lay out this personal brand concept in there. We, at the time we called it identity themes. It was around creating an identity and it, but it really does tie to what we're going to talk about here. So in, in which book is the, the pages you reference? Yeah, this is in Imbar. Got it. And uh, what, what are the pages again? Say it again. 116, 116 to 123. Okay. So for those so, of you who have that book, you know, go ahead and flip to that section. You can you can read about there. In fact, Mark, we probably should have just called Imbar personal branding. I don't know why we didn't do that. I think that's uh, you know really you know does describe this in 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 a certain way. Yeah, I think we wanted something unique, and it it's tough for somebody who doesn't understand Imbar to know what it means. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is about that. So yeah, yeah. L- let me jump in and give some just some background here. So we, we all have a brand. So with, within the organization you work for and speaking to leaders today in general, you have a brand like it or not, you have a brand. What personal branding is about is taking control of that. And why not? Why not design a personal brand that's you, but that aligns with the core competencies of your role and will allow you to become a top performer and will, again, enhance your brand. So 
I have done this with, I don't know, Brian, how many leaders I've done this exercise with. So I would, and I, and I call the exercise personal branding. I would say that I've done it with somewhere around a hundred executives over time. It may be a little bit less than that. And I simply work with them on developing their brand within their organization, within their role, because each role is different. So the first thing you have to have is the core competencies that will work in your role. And I loved our podcast, by the way, Brian, on core competencies. Yeah, that was a good one. So leaders, if you have not heard that uh, podcast, go, go back and listen to that. It was just a few weeks ago. And that would help set up the personal branding side. But you you literally, by knowing the core competencies of the role that you have, you then can pick and choose your identity and develop your brand within those core competencies. And again, you have a brand at, at work, you have a brand at home, likely you can merge those in, the, in this scenario. Our success with this has been off the charts. So we have taken leaders who literally had never thought about this, helped them develop their brand, and they became top performers within the organization. And yes, it is about their identity, but it's a little bit different. And again, it's based on those core competencies. And we're going to give you some examples. And it, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's energizing to many of the people that have, a, have gone through this. They would tell you it may have been the most significant um, thing they've done in their career and that it led them to, you know, totally different, different levels that they would not have achieved. The other thing we've seen is those that have gone through it have, have started to do it with their own teams and helped their teams individually develop their personal brand. And it's, it's, it's been pretty, pretty amazing to, to hear those stories. The other thing that we know, and I don't know if we've mentioned this before, is most organizations have some sort of engagement survey of the team. Larger organizations for sure have that. And so they survey the team and they find out the engagement level generally on a scale of zero to 100. And what we've found over the years in our gapology work is that the leaders with the highest engagement scores tend to have the best results. So when their teams are engaged at a higher level, love coming to work, energized, working harder, et cetera, they have the, the top performance. We can assure you that your personal brand as a leader is what drives engagement. So if you become great at what we're talking about right now, it will drive up your engagement scores, whether you scored or not, and it will lead to great results. One of the examples we're going to share with you uh, tonight would be a leader who was a new leader, who didn't really have a brand, who developed a brand, who shared it with the entire team, presented it to the entire team of the subordinate team that worked for him and who became the top performer in the organization. So personal branding has that level of potential impact if you uh, if you go for this. Sorry for the lengthy intro there, Brian. What do you want to add before I go on? Yeah, no, that's great, Mark. Um, yeah, I, well, two things that I wrote down there. Uh, first of all, yeah, engagement is incredibly important. I think that's one of the key things overall to you know, deliver the results you're looking for. It also impacts things like uh, retention and commitment and some things like that. So, so don't, don't underestimate the importance of team engagement and individual engagement um, and your personal brand, how you lead your team, how your team sees how you lead them. That is instrumental in that. The other thing, and it's really almost a question mark. Um, so you're talking about core competencies, 
And often an organization's core values goes along with that. So anytime you hire people or you're training people, you want to always include core competencies and core values, the things that the company believes in. Um, we refer to it as, as our purpose and that kind of thing. How, how do you think core values falls into this? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, so step back from that a bit and, and just come to the purpose of the organization. And if you don't have one, develop one. Uh, so the purpose often defines then the core values of the organization. It's what you're all about. It's your foundation. It's who you are. The core competencies then are the skills that are needed by role. And again, we're talking about leaders here in general. So what are the, what are the core competencies, the skills that we need in our leaders that will deliver the values and the purpose? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So an example that we're going to use tonight, one of them is a servant leader. So servant leader a leader that serves their team is a core competency that in the organization we're talking about would align with the values and also deliver the purpose. But that's a core competency. Most leaders are not servant leaders. Think about that. Yeah. And could that be part of your brand? So leaders right now thinking about this is servant leader part of your brand? Could it be? What if it was a big part of your brand? Mm. How might that change your engagement scores and your results? So that's a core competency. It's not an easy skill to have. So core competencies are skills. It's not an easy skill to have, but it can be developed and it can be life changing in, in total. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. I love that. I love what you said there, that your competencies will deliver your values. That almost should be on a t-shirt. I love that. Uh, oh, I, I don't have I, that t-shirt. Yeah, I see how that's what connected. Are, so I what are you that. waiting for? <laughs> need to get on that right now. Get on it. Okay, by the end of the podcast. No, that's great. Yeah. So you, you, do need, you, you do need to know if, if the organization hasn't given them to you, you do need to know the core competencies of your role. So we we suggest, again, three to five, and there's likely five core competencies that equal your role. And again, if the organization hasn't given them to you, go ahead and you know come up with them so that you have them. They are key to success in your organization, in your role. And that's that's the starting point. But your brand then is built from that. So we suggest and we strongly believe that the number of core competencies in your brand needs to be three. And, you know, we could go into lengthy detail about why, but three seems to be the magic number. So you literally pick out of the core competencies of your role, the three that are going to be your brand. You're going to deliver those three and then you rank them. And this is a big deal. What is the number one? What is number two? And what is the tertiary number, number three? And they may have a logical flow for you. So that part's not as difficult as it may sound, but they are one, two, and three. Once we're there, we're actually well on our way to developing your brand. Yeah, I, I like that ranking thing, um, you know, and I see how one can kind of build upon the other or one kind of creates the other if you think about how they're connected. Yeah, so what, what we do there is the number three has to pass through the number two and the number two then through the number one. So they all pass through the lens of number one. So let's just pick servant leader for a moment since we mentioned it earlier. If servant leader is the number one core competency that's gonna, gonna be your brand, then whatever's two and three pass through the lens of servant leader. That changes everything. So they have the context 
of servant leader. And that, again, illuminates your brand like you can't believe. So number two and number three, without passing through servant leader, standing on their own may not really create the brand. But when they pass through servant leader, the brand is created. I hope that's not too complicated for those of you that haven't approached this topic before. But that piece of it right there is totally significant to the point of you really do need to understand that piece. Can you help illuminate that a bit? Yeah. Um, looking at it as a lens, I think is the right way to do it. So if you set servant leader as your primary and you hold it up like it's a, a camera lens or something, and you hold it up and you're looking through that, that creates everything that you see, everything that, that you deliver beyond that. So that would be, you look through the servant leader lens and you're going to see these other two uh, competencies that you're going after. And it really needs to be something that's I think significant, your number one has to be significant. It has to be something that's really important that you're going to hold as, as your most important thing that you're, you know, seeing as your brand. Um, you know, just the word servant leader, that's a massive brand. Uh, if I said to everybody on my team, I'm a servant leader, number one, that's my number one thing. How they view me is going to be much different. And everything, if I continue to look through that lens, my behaviors are going to be much different than it would be if it was something less important. And they're going to evaluate you through that lens as well. Right. Yeah. So right. the minute you don't live up to servant leader, you know, you're you're going to have, you know, lowered your engagement scores and hurt your brand. Yeah. So it it's a big deal when you put servant leader, you know, at the top. I want to make sure everyone understands this part. So I'm going to give you the three core competencies of the brand of a leader who took these and became the top performer in the organization. So number three was talent obsessed. So that was a core competency that the organization required that this leader said is my number three. I'm going to hire talent. I'm going to work with my talent and train them and develop them. And I'm going to be all about my team and I'm going to be talent obsessed. So that's number three. So you can see how big of a brand this person is developing because that's number three. Number two is results driven. So this leader said, I'm going to be the one that delivers the results. My team will deliver the top results. We are going to be about those results. Now, when we talked earlier about the lens, picture talent obsessed number three passing through results driven. That's pretty significant. So then the top, the number one core competency of this personal brand is servant leader. So this is a difficult execution piece here. So talent obsessed, passing through results driven, and passing through servant leader. So this leader was obsessed with serving their team by helping them deliver results and helping them develop their talent to do so. This leader who was was not uh, a top performer prior to the personal branding process became the number one performer in the organization. Yeah, it's interesting how talent obsessed really was produced because he was results driven and results driven was really because he saw himself as a servant leader. Um, you know, it really does almost kind of produce uh, the next, you know, in, in his model, that's how he laid it out. For you, for you listeners, you know, it might be something completely different, but this is how this leader saw it. He saw himself as a servant leader first, and which then, uh, you know, being results driven was really, I think, from that. And then the talent obsessed was really from being results driven because he had to create talent, hire talent, develop talent, whatever, um, in order to produce the results. And he, and he had to produce the results to be a servant leader. So I, I feel like the, the arrows flow back and forth through this whole thing, but it, it's really interconnected, but you have to look at it through the, the lens of whatever's the most important to you. I, I think that really creates the catalyst for everything. Yeah. The arrows could go up, they could go down again, picture, picture this visually as three, 
you know, umbrellas sort of stacked on top of each other. Again, think about the fact that we're we're simply starting from the standpoint of saying, I'm going to be a servant leader. That's going to be my brand. I'm going to be results driven. I will be talent obsessed. And that powerful recognition that that's what you go after every day, game changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Top performance isn't far away. Extremely high engagement, not far away. You can, you can, you can get there. So what this leader did, which I shared with Brian, is he created this giant poster on foam core and it was his brand. So he created a visual showing those three arching umbrellas of the three and then photos of the team and photos of his family. And um, he carried it from location to location that he supervised and presented it to the team and told them, this is my brand, and I want you to hold me accountable to be this. Wow. Yeah. How many leaders would do that? Think about that. What if you did that? How would that affect your results? Here, here's the brand I aspire to become. I need your help. And, and how many other leaders then did that inspire to want a personal brand? And top performance came very quickly. Think about it. Top performance was delivered by that message, by coming to that team and saying, here's my brand and I want your help and I want your support and I want your feedback. And if I ever don't deliver it, let me know. And uh, so when we talk about personal branding being career changing, being life changing, it's very real. It is very real. So this process, and we've seen it play out many times, as we talked about earlier, can dramatically impact the lives of others and certainly can impact your brand. Yeah, it's interesting how this connects with MBAR. So when you think about identity, um, and I think I think they're adjacent things. I don't think they're exactly the same, but um, identity is how you see yourself. Um, but I think to a certain extent, your other people have an identity of you, and that's really what your personal brand is. That's what you're creating. Other people can see, just like an, a company's brand, you know, Nike or uh, you know whoever, right? They all have a brand, um, which is how the public sees that organization. Um, you know, it could be Apple or Nike or whoever. the 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 public sees that organization through that lens. So with a personal brand, this is how other people are going to see you, you know, who you are, what you do, I think is an important part there. What can they count on from you? I think that's an important part there. It's really critical to develop this with intent rather than just kind of letting it happen. I think there's a lot of benefits there where you can, like this gentleman did, where you can really create something that is is very intentional, that's going to deliver the the outcomes that you're going after, I think there's some massive benefits here. So think about how your identity, how you see yourself connects with how other people see you. And that's a, you know, a great place to start. Yeah. The, the other thing that happens is the leaders that work for you say, I, I want this too. Yeah. Yeah. Help me. Mm-hmm. Sh- show me what you've done. So the elements we've given you so far is um, three core competencies in Rank order one, two, and three. Two and three, both passing through the lens of number one. So think about that. If you have any questions on that, let us know. Uh, So again, picture this poster that he put together, which has those in the center of the poster. And they're arching above each other. So servant leader arches over results driven, which arches over talent obsessed. And that's, that's the center of the poster and that's the personal brand so the other thing that we develop that works here is once that's known we have that leader write a personal brand statement and i want to read you his um, so and this is a descriptor of who you aspire to become i am a talent obsessed leader who is also results driven i develop my team members to be their best, and to drive results 
doing it all through the eyes and the heart of a servant leader. And that brand statement then is this, um, the flow of the of these arches up through servant leader. That's sort of a description of that. And in this leader's case, he felt that he could live this brand at home. He could live this brand at work. And in his case, it was incredibly life-changing and led to absolute top performance and, again, cascaded down through his team to lead many other leaders to a different level and their top performance and to developing their personal brand and so on. So I, I wish we had a we we should be having a video of this so you could see it, but this is a big deal and it's certainly part of MBAR. It certainly leverages gapology and closes many gaps. If you don't have a personal brand, you need one. And it uh it it will work for you. So and if you need any help, we certainly are here, you know, to give you that guidance. That that's what I have, Brian. I'll turn it to you. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a good place to leave it, Mark. Um, I think what I'll do with this one, so I haven't written a blog for a little while. I think I'll put a blog together on this and include a maybe a mock-up of this poster. Certainly don't want to share his personal poster, but we can mock something up to give everybody an idea of what uh, you know, a sample poster might look like. But I, I think that this is really an incredibly important topic, and I can't believe we haven't really talked about this before, um, but you know, when you look at the results that you're going after and your engagement of your team, I don't think there's anything that you can do that's that's more impactful than creating a strong personal brand. Yeah. And if you come back to one of the first things I said is you all have a brand already. Right. Yeah. Why why not take control of it and make it something incredible? Yep. You know, so and maybe yours is incredible. I'm not suggesting it's not, but what, what if everyone out there really took control of this? How could we change everything? So Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost like uh, the tagline we have on a, on the cover of our MBAR book, Design Your Destiny. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and, and this helps design the destinies of many others that work for you. Yeah. Because exactly. they're, they're going to want it too. So you are going to have to be prepared to teach this in addition to be this. Mm -hmm. Yep, perfect. All right, Mark. Well, thank you so much. This is a good one. Thanks, Brian. Well yep. done. All right. You too. We'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right. That'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology or MBAR or Speed of Purpose, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.